Greetings, this is Greg. Will flaps improve turning performance in a World War II fighter? The short answer is that if loss of altitude is not a concern, then yes, the flaps will usually allow tighter turns, at least to some degree. The complete answer is quite a bit more complex. That's what I'll be covering in this video. If you haven't watched my earlier video on turn performance, I suggest you watch it first. A link is in the description. There are four types of flaps that were typically used on World War II fighters. All of these have at least some effect on turn performance, some more than others. Let's have a quick look at these four types and talk about what airplanes use them. Starting at the top here, we have the plane flap design. This type of flap was probably the most common on World War II fighters. It was used on the P-51 Mustang and the BF-109. Next we have the split flap. This type of flap tends to provide relatively little lift, but a lot of drag. Of all these types, it is the least helpful in turns, although it does have other advantages. Split flaps can be found on Spitfires, Hurricanes, all the FW-190 types, the Mitsubishi Zero, the P-40, and most of the Soviet fighters. Slotted flaps are highly effective at providing both lift and drag. They do this by allowing air to move through a slot between the flap and the wing that's created when the flap extends. This design tends to improve turn performance at lower flap settings. Uh, the Corsair, Thunderbolt, Hellcat all have this type. Last we have the Fowler type. This design increases the wing area when extended because the flap moves directly aft more than it moves down, at least in the first portion of its travel. This gives a large amount of lift and relatively little drag. The Fowler type provides the largest benefit to turn performance. However, this design is unusual on World War II aircraft, but it can be found on some. It's found on the P-38 Lightning, the Nakajima Ki-43 Oscar, and the Ki-84 Frank. It should be noted that the characteristics of these various types blur together a little bit. For example, the slotted flap at lower settings does move back a small amount, kind of like a Fowler flap, and Fowlers create a slot when they're extended, kind of like a slotted flap. However, they are all different in both design and effect. So the question is, should you put the flaps down in a dogfight to improve turning performance? If you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably know, as a source, I'm going to use a NACA report. Of course, NACA has a report on this, and as usual, it's, it's very well done. This particular report covers split, slotted, fowler, and split perforated flaps. That last type is typically found on dive bombers. It also covers the effect of increased horsepower and the effect of using a design with flaps that run the full span of the wing. We'll skip the information on the perforated and full span flaps since they don't really apply much to this video. This particular report is very math intensive. This isn't a math channel, so I'll just go over the report's conclusions and then we'll run the data through a turn performance calculator using the F4U Corsair to observe the effects of flaps in a turn. I'll read you the conclusions from the NACA report on this subject. The first one is regarding turns at a constant altitude. Quote, from the results of the present analysis, it appears that flaps become effective for improving turning performance only at speeds below the speed at which turning without flaps is limited by stalling. Unquote. This is important to understand. As an example, if you're in a 6G turn, and that's as many Gs as you can pull, and the plane's wing is installing, flaps will not improve turn performance at your present speed. Next, in regards to turns where loss of altitude is not a concern, the report states, quote, if turning is not restricted to the condition of no loss of altitude or speed, then of course, turns can be made at any altitude more quickly with flaps." Unquote. They go on to say that while all the types of flaps can help in turns, at least to some degree, the fowler and slotted flaps are the most effective. To really get a handle on these concepts, let's take a look at the F4U-4 Corsair. This is the final variant of the Corsair to see combat in World War II. The Corsair can pull a 9G turn, which is more than almost any other fighter in World War II. 
By that, I mean it is actually rated to pull 9 Gs. That number is in the flight manual. It's not something that a lightly loaded airplane did once in a test flight. Furthermore, it can pull 9 Gs throughout a huge operating envelope, which includes speeds up to 440 knots and altitudes up to 10,000 feet, and much higher within certain speed ranges. And it does it at actual weights the plane would see in a dogfight. To help the pilot exploit this capability, the Corsair is equipped with a G-meter, usually called an accelerometer, and a G-suit connection. In order to further enhance the Corsair's turning performance, it's fitted with slotted flaps of a highly effective design. They have a setting specifically for maneuvering in combat, and an operating handle that's located within easy reach of the pilot's left hand for quick selection or deselection in battle. The flap setting for combat or maneuvering is 20 degrees. It's usable up to 200 knots of indicated airspeed. So you can't use this feature at any time, only when the flight slows down to 200 knots or less. This is a good time to mention that the majority of World War II fighters do not have a specific maneuvering or combat flap setting, but that doesn't mean that flaps were not used or could not be used in turns. They can, and in some cases were. The P-38 Lightning has a specific setting for maneuvering, Although it wasn't really a dogfighter anyway, it was best used as a hit-and-run fighter, and that was the tactic most P-38 pilots used in the Pacific, where it shot down more Japanese aircraft than any other fighter. At the other end of the spectrum was the Nakajima Ki-43 Oscar, which had a combat setting for its Fowler flaps. However, as no Allied pilot in his right mind would attempt to turn fight with an Oscar at low speeds, I doubt the Japanese pilots were able to take much advantage of this. The German VF-109 had very effective flaps and leading edge slats. There are known cases of German pilots using these to tighten their turns up. Most famously, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this name, but uh, Hans Joachim Marseille, uh, shown here with the hurricane he shot down, uh, used this feature quite a bit. Back to the Corsair, it had an actual setting for flaps when in a maneuvering dogfight, as we discussed. It also had other desirable features. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows in Corsair Town. It had one serious issue with regards to turns. In yet another NACA report, this one on the Corsair's handling, they were extremely unhappy with one specific aspect of the Corsair's turn performance, and that was, of all things, the stall warning system. Without adequate stall warning, it's very difficult to fly a plane right on the edge of its turning abilities. A really good, experienced pilot could do it, but pilots new to the airplane would have difficulty with this. A poor stall warning system was really inexcusable. It's a simple system to design, and a fix should have been put in. It's my opinion that the high losses of Corsairs were related to this problem. Only 187 Corsairs were shot down in air-to-air -air combat yet 922 were lost in flying accidents, and of those, 230 crashed while maneuvering in combat. I'll mention that NACA has, in, among all the reports, they have a report on the Supermarine Spitfire, and they praised its stall warning system, and I think that that system contributed to the Spitfire's success in turn fighting. Now let's take a look at the actual performance of the F4U-4 Corsair in turns. For this scenario, I'm going to assume that we have the best pilot in the Marine Corps, someone who is hugely experienced in the Corsair. This example isn't so much going to be a comparison of two airplanes as it is an exercise to explain the use and effect of the combat flap settings. Our Corsair is closing in on a Japanese fighter. It's a Ki-84 Frank, which is a plane that is hugely threatening to the Corsair because it has similar performance numbers, and it has Fowler flaps with a combat setting that will give it an advantage in a low-speed turn fight. Furthermore, the Frank is fast enough so the Corsair can't disengage at will. Both planes are nearly at sea level, so there's no chance of either one diving away. When the fight starts, both planes are flying at 300 knots indicated, and the Frank breaks hard with a maximum performance turn. Now our pilot in the Corsair knows that with his 9G limit and his ability to fly the plane at that limit, 
No plane in the world can outturn the Corsair above 264 knots. Even if a plane did have a higher limit, it wouldn't matter because the pilot would black out. So our Corsair pilot throws his plane into a maximum performance turn to chase after the, the Frank. Now with the numbers in the turn calculator, it looks like this. At 300 knots, we need to bank 83.65 degrees to get our maximum rate turn, which happens at 9 Gs. Our pilot knows his plane well, and he knows that 83.65 is the bank angle needed for a 9G turn above 264 knots indicated. In a 9G turn, the plane is going to start decelerating like crazy because of all the drag, but it won't stall until it reaches 264 knots. That's the lowest speed at which the Corsair is capable of pulling its max G load. The Ki-84 is pulling a lower G number, so the Corsair is gaining on it. Now, as the Corsair approaches 264 knots, the pilot will go to war emergency power, which turns on the water methanol injection and adds manifold pressure. This won't stop the deceleration, but it will decrease the rate. As we reach 264 knots, in order to avoid a stall, the pilot has to do something. He can't deploy his maneuvering flaps yet, they won't extend until the speed is down to 200 knots. That means the Corsair pilot will have no choice but to reduce his bank angle and thus his G-load. In this case, a pilot who is incredibly skilled will start to reduce the bank angle in a linear fashion to keep the wings just barely above stall. A stall in a high G turn right above the water will be fatal, but in this case not turning fast enough will be fatal as well. At 81 degrees of bank, our plane will be pulling 6.4 Gs and have a stall speed of 222 knots. Now I have yet to meet a pilot that can control bank angle within one degree, let alone do it while pulling a 6 G turn, which is why pilot skill has a lot to do with turn rate. The pilot's ability to keep the airplane in a high G turn and just on the edge of stall is a bigger variable in many cases than the actual aircraft's turn performance at least when you're comparing fighters that are fairly close in capability to begin with. Now our Corsair still doesn't have a firing angle on the Ki-84, but the Corsair's wing loading and war emergency power are allowing it to gain that angle on the, on the Ki-84, but slowly. If the Ki-84 is able to avoid the Corsair's guns until the fight is slow enough that it can deploy its Fowler flaps, then it's going to be a problem for the Corsair. Thankfully, the Frank can't extend them until 146 knots. Now, as we're approaching 200 knots at about 79 degrees of bank and at 5.2 Gs, at 200 knots we can deploy the maneuvering flaps. The pilot will lift his hand off the throttle, which is heavy because it weighs 5.2 times its normal weight, his hand that is, and select flaps to 20 degrees. As soon as the flaps reach 20 degrees, the Corsair's stall speed at the same 78.9 degree bank angle drops to 173 knots. Since the plane is still moving at 200 knots at this point, or very close, it can actually increase its bank angle a little and tighten up the turn. The Frank can't do that yet because it's going too fast to deploy its Fowlers. At this point in our scenario, the Corsair is going to rapidly outturn the Frank for a few seconds and hopefully get some shots in. The Corsair will continue to decelerate even at war emergency power due to the huge amount of drag in the turn. As it does so, it will have to decrease the bank angle. When it's at the point where the deceleration stops and the bank angle is constant, it will be at the point where the maximum sustained rate of turn is happening, which is usually from about 60 to about 72 degrees of bank in World War II fighters. Hopefully that example shows how flaps would be used in a turn fight. Of course, there are other factors to consider. Uh, some planes have lower G limits with the flaps down. Some aircraft like the Spitfire only have two flap settings up and down, and the down position creates a huge amount of drag from its split flap design, probably so much that using flaps in a turn in a Spitfire would rarely be practical. Both the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Army Air Force doctrines by 1943 taught avoiding turn fights and instead used their plane's superior speed and diving abilities to hit and run. Now in cases where the enemy planes had superior speed or diving abilities, 
The suggested tactics usually involve teamwork. So the 1v1 turn fight, as discussed here, certainly wasn't common, but it did happen. Ultimately, it's usually not going to be a good idea to deploy flaps in a World War II fighter as a combat tactic. In most cases, you're going to be better off keeping up your speed and your energy. However, NACA and various aircraft flight manuals show it is a viable tactic in some conditions, and it's a tactic that was used. Thanks for watching. Please comment below. Have a great day. Oh, and I put uh, sources in the description. Some people have been asking for that. Thank you. Goodbye.